There isn't any room at the top for local girls like us. I'm not giving up. Women represent 50% of middle management and professional positions, but the percentage of women at the top of the organization doesn't even represent one-third of that number. Organizations lose out on the opportunity to capitalize on the skills and diverse talent of a portion of their workforce when women are not included. The Wall Street Journal coined the term glass ceiling in 1986 to describe the condition of women moving up in managerial positions who were unable to reach the top because of invisible but real barriers, discriminatory attitudes, as well as organizational bias. Even after the passing of the Equal Pay Act of 1963, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and even the Equal Employment Opportunity Act of 1972, pervasive gender inequalities continue to persist that prevent qualified women from advancing to positions of prominence. With the glass ceiling metaphor, as it implies that everyone has equal access to positions until all women hit the single, invisible, and impassable barrier. Women earn 57% of the bachelor's degrees, 60% of master's degrees, and more than half of the doctoral degrees in the United States, and they make up nearly half of the United States labor force. Thus, despite their advanced degrees, women still are often absent from leadership roles. Women continue to do a majority of the child care and household responsibilities, leaving men the opportunity to pursue higher level leadership positions. This occupation gender segregation manifests itself in scenarios where men hold high level positions with a high level of productivity and organizational responsibility. In contrast, women tend to hold positions that are said to be more compatible with this family life balance and require less responsibility and productivity. Next, Pablo will provide more evidence and clarity around this leadership labyrinth and its impact on gender and leadership. The gender gap in leadership is a global phenomenon whereby women are disproportionately concentrated in lower level and lower authority leadership positions than men. Discussions of women's underrepresentation in high level leadership positions have three explanations. Differences in gender investment in human capital, gender differences, and lastly, prejudice and discrimination against female leaders. One prominent set of explanations for the labyrinth is that women have less human capital investment in education, training, and work experience than men. This supposed lack of human capital is set to result in a dearth of qualified women, sometimes called a pipeline problem. However, a closer look at the numbers reveals that women are indeed in the pipeline, but that the pipeline is leaking. A related explanation for the leadership gap is that this culturally prescribed division of labor leads women to self-select to take themselves out of leadership tracks by choosing mommy track positions that do not funnel into leadership positions. However, research does not support this argument. Empirical research supports small differences in leadership styles and effectiveness between men and women. Women experience slight effectiveness disadvantages in masculine leader roles, whereas roles that are more feminine offer them some advantages. Additionally, women exceed men in the use of democratic or participatory styles, and they are more likely to use transformational leadership behaviors. Gender stereotypes are pervasive, well-documented, and highly resistant to change. Gender stereotypes both describe stereotypic beliefs about the attributes of women and men and prescribe how men and women should be. Men are stereotyped with confidence, assertiveness, independence, rationality, and decisiveness, while women are stereotyped with communal characteristics like concern for others, sensitivity, warmth, helpfulness, and nurturing. And Tam will now continue with some more gender differences. Thank you, Pablo. An often cited barrier to women's advancement is a presumed gender difference in commitment to employment and motivation to lead. Research indicates that women show the same level of identification with and commitment to paid employment roles as men do, and both view their roles as workers to be secondary to their roles as parents. In leadership roles, women are confronted with cross pressures. 
As leaders, they should be masculine and tough, but as women, they should be not too manly. These opposing expectations for women often result in the perception that women are less qualified for elite leadership positions than men. Gender biases can be detrimental in pay and in selecting leaders, largely because the unstructured nature of selection allows biased decisions without accountability. Decision makers are influenced by stereotypes that disadvantage women, like selecting candidates within their own image. The number of women who successfully navigate the labyrinth is on the rise. Organizations are beginning to make it easier for women to reach top positions. And so cultures are changing. For example, the notion of uninterrupted full-time careers and the separation of work and family are being challenged today. Now that we've discussed gender differences in leadership styles, Kim will talk about strengths and the way forward in gender leadership issues. Thanks, Tam. How do we shine a spotlight on gender inequality and leadership? Consider these ideas as we help women through the labyrinth. Take a look. With all those great ideas, there's some challenges to acknowledge. Gender imbalance elsewhere. The intersectionality of gender with race, ethnicity, and sexual orientation complicates the research. Finally, some don't wish to acknowledge that there's a gender issue at all, just personality flaws with no root cause. Assuredly, there's a leader in everyone, and no one's positive inspiration should be denied. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in class.